are welcome to leave. Um, moving to item 8 on the agenda, which is a self-built lot adjacent to Three Sparrow Port Way, Meadow Lane, Newhall. Could you the report? <coughs> Sorry, I'm so, I've lost my glasses. What glasses? Have you lost? Lost glasses. Yeah, you could yeah. take two pairs away. Did yeah. I? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw you pick them up. This application seeks planning permission for the erection of a three story dwelling on a self built plot adjacent to three Sparrow Walkway. <coughs> the location of the site is start. The land was originally reserved for the development of a primary school, however Essex County Council has granted planning permission for the school without this land included and has stated that the land is no longer required for the school. Uh, in addition, this committee approved an application to a dwelling adjacent to the east of the site uh, in January. Um, it will be hard to see at this scale, but the approved dwelling is outlined hashed there. Roughly in this position. Um, this slide shows the proposed dwelling and identifies the adjacent neighbouring properties. So you can see number three, number five, number seven. There would be space for cars to park in front of the house in accordance with the parking standards, and there are no trees on or immediately next to the site. This slide shows the proposed view from Meadow Lane. The house would be part three and part two storeys. The height of the three storey element would increase towards the rear, uh, and it is considered that the design would provide an appropriate transition from the three storey property shown on the right to the approved two storey property on the left. The increase in height of the first storey element can be seen more closely on this slide. So can see that it's lowest at the front in that corner and it rises towards the, the back and towards the left. The dwelling will be finished in brick, slate, tile and copper with grey aluminium framed fenestration and it's considered that the design is compatible with varied house types within New Hall. In addition, the dwelling would finish off developments along the Meadow Lane um, and otherwise there would appear to be an empty plot between the approved dwelling and number three. Here you can see the access into the site and the character of the neighbouring properties. There would be balconies to the rear of the proposed dwelling, however these would be recessed and therefore naturally direct views towards the rear garden of the proposed dwelling. The most sensitive matter is the impact on the amenity to neighbours to the west of the site. This elevation would be side on to those properties to the west. There would be a window in this side elevation, however it would serve a hallway and be located at a high level with the sill 1.8 metres from the floor level, um, so there are no concerns regarding overlooking from that window. It is not considered that there would be a significant impact on 3 or 7 Sparrow Walk Way, which is shown on these photos. So 3 and 7 is the one on the left there. And that's because these dwellings would be in offset positions from the proposed dwelling and will continue to get direct sunlight from the south. The impact on number 5, which you can see there, is considered to be the greatest as the proposed dwelling would extend beyond the width of number five's re rear garden. However, number five would also continue to re receive light from the south. In addition, as the proposed dwelling would be 16 metres away from the rear elevation of number five, it is not considered that the perception of overbearing would warrant refusal of the application especially in the context of New Hall, which is characterised by more compact development. And whilst it's not an adopted guidance, it is worthy of note that the Essex Design Guide suggests that a 15 metre separation distance 
would be appropriate for a side to rear relationship such as this. Uh, finally, loss of view is not a material planning consideration and therefore cannot be taken into account. Neighbours have also raised concerns regarding construction impacts. Some disruption will inevitably need to occur in order for any development to be built. However, a condition has been recommended to restrict the hours of construction as occurred with the application which was approved by the committee in January. Uh, the Highways Authority has no issues with the proposal. Neighbours have also suggested that the proposal should be amended, such as by repositioning the dwelling closer to Meadow Lane. However, as I said previously, the Council has a duty to assess the proposal as submitted and it's considered that the impacts from this proposal would be acceptable. And therefore, the officer's recommendation is one of approval, subject to the conditions and informatives set out in pages 24 to 26 of the agenda. Thanks. Thank you. Um, we have, as I mentioned earlier, three speakers against this. Um, so if I could call Sheila Sullivan first, please. and then some that are specific to our house. The very title of this report, is, this application is misleading because the site is actually adjacent to four dwellings, numbers three, five, seven, and nine. I walk around the new hall development very regularly and I cannot see any other instances where a two-story house is boxed in on two sides by three-story houses. The planning officer's report states that the application site is set slightly lower than the two existing three-storey houses. It is not. If you visit the site, there is a clearly visible upward slope from these two houses to the proposed new one. The concern about the negative impact of the bulk and mass of this building is actually addressed in relation to the new building proposed but that sensitivity is not shown to the existing houses, where the sense of bulk and mass is really prevailing. There is a lack of specific measurement in this report regarding the impact on numbers five, seven, and nine. Perhaps this is because officers have not made a site visit. They have definitely not visited any of the objectors' houses or gardens. And in several cases, this report contains subjective evaluations which are unsupported by evidence. For example, something is slightly lower, further away, is considered acceptable, is not considered to be excessive, etc. I will now move on to issues specific to our house. Generally speaking, these diagrams within the plan do not show the extent of our house and garden and do not take account of the impact of the proposal on our amenity. We are very worried about overlooking and loss of privacy. This report states that the screens at the side would restrict views except directly to the rear, i.e. into the proposed house's own rear garden. Councillors, this is simply not true. Anyone standing in the middle and to the eastern side of the terrace balcony can see could be able to see directly into our back bedroom and our sitting room and the whole of our garden. This also applies to the second floor bedrooms. We are also concerned about additional structures in the garden because in the plans for this house there is no provision at all for any form of outside storage. There are for bikes, compost, gardening equipment and so on. Since the proposed garden is over a metre higher than ours and slopes street steeply towards us, any structure would be visible to us and could be ugly or intrusive. So we are asking you, in the interest of um, the neighbours, to reject this application. Thank you very much. Could I call Louise Lewis next, please? Thank you very much. Again, you'll have three minutes. Okay. <coughs> 
as I drone above our house at the level of the second story. Um, and as you can see, it does look into Sheila's garden, which is this one here, and this is our garden. Our little panda around is available on a if you wanted it. Uh, my name is Louise Lewis. I live with my husband and daughter at Seven Sparrow Walk Way. Um, I strongly object to the proposed planning application, mainly for the following reasons. Privacy, like the loss of the main sea. This photo was taken at 20 metres, which is 6 metres above ground zero of the seven foot plot. And that would be the second storey window to propose the government. As you can see, there is clear oversight of our whole property and provides views into all of our windows. Whilst the plans show that there is an extended wall on the west elevation to shield both us and the homeowner, this is not a true representation when considering the build sits on the plot and the height. Remember that this build is 9.3 metres high at its peak, which sits on a site approximately 1.4 metres higher from the ground level of our property. We know that we recently had our garden done, so we know how high it is above our fence. Um, the second storey windows are then well above 5.5 metres, which are shown on the optics drawings as being the base of our picture. This is not accurate. The second storey has a proposed office TV room with direct view over the rear. At that height, where it sits at that window looking out, will be able to overlook number 7 and number 9. And as an office or a TV room, people might sit there looking out the window. Um, as you can see, we have a trampoline for our child and their friends to play, and I feel uncomfortable that someone can so easily observe them. The insinuation we would not lose light is also incorrect, because while we would not lose direct sunlight, our property will be dwarfed by this overbearing structure, blocking the view to the left of our property, causing loss of immunity. Generally, we were led to believe, obviously we've spoken about the school, um, you know, that was how we sold our house, that that would be part of the school. Um, we don't think it's ever the intention to have that structure built there. Um, I'm not naive enough to realise that there won't be a structure, but I do feel that three storeys high, this is very overbearing for the area we're in. Safety issues, I have regarding access to the site on the chase. The traffic in the mornings is bad enough without a lorry trying to get down there, which we have sometimes. Um, Meadowlands far away, traffic on pedestrians. The, the pavement isn't finished. We've got um, fencing for pavement and current, and if a lorry was to come down there, it would block the road. Um, I think that needs to be given some consideration. Um, it's stating the plan to documentation. This bill is in line with local community. This is misleading. It's in the vicinities, where I'm way in Lane, there are only three or four bedroom properties, excluding the older pre newborn development farmhouse, which were well planned to allow all houses appropriate space, light, and privacy to enable them to enjoy the surroundings and bring them closer to nature. The three story townhouses adjacent to the plot are set forward to allow the number five such amenity. The New Hill Project principles state design makes the optimal use of space using orientation to your privacy and reduce your uniformity. Design codes ensure the relationship of each house with other house and so on is carefully considered. This cannot be said for this proposal due to its vastness and close proximity. Um, I strongly yeah, object. Okay, thank you very much. Could I call? Mr. Arkle, please. <laughs> Amenity. 
the Book of New Hall, the New Hall Project website, and all of the promotional material describes a development that works at one with the environment, a place where the surrounding environment reinforces our sense of being at one with the world. New Hall has always been about making a soft footprint on the environment. Our home is designed as semi-rural and is close to the countryside. Our home was designed specifically with New Hall's master plan to ensure visuals of trees and skyline. The proposed design contradicts this and will remove the design accepted from our home and impose an enormous wall. See slides 4, 5 and 6. I therefore refuse to accept the position and the height of this building which would, have, would leave us with an overbearing, towering wall above our home has considered the impact on us. Our enjoyment will be dramatically and unacceptably depleted. It contradicts the very principles of New Hall. And number three, the proposed build has a window with direct line of sight into my son's bedroom and our downstairs living space. I accept what you said about it being 1.8 metres, but I don't know. It looks like there's stairs. To me, it looks like you walk down the stairs and you'll be looking through the window into my son's bedroom. And, then, and because of the height, straight into my garden, into my kitchen doors, into my kitchen side. So if that's not right, I accept that's right. Okay? Um, so in summary, visual impact, property is overbearing. Two, our immediacy, the build reduces the enjoyment of our home. And three, the privacy aspect. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Mr. Cheers. Councillor Charles. Thank you for this opportunity to address you this evening about the proposed self-built um, property at three, uh, that is adjacent to three Sparrow Walkway on Meadow Lane. I speak in support of the residents who are objecting to this planning application this evening. I think there are overwhelming objections to this planning application tied over a number of key areas. Firstly, the effect on amenities the effect on light and the overbearing nature of this three-storey proposed development. When the original plot was factored into the New Hall Master Plan, as has already been said by the officers, it was considered to be a plot for a primary school. Those plans changed and now we're facing the prospects of two properties being built on that site. My understanding is that Sparrowball residents who bought their homes in good faith understood that the impact of any certain development wouldn't be a three-storey dwelling towering over their gardens. I think the amenity argument is particularly powerful in this case. Policies H10 of the local plan and PL2 of the emerging local plan require an assessment of amenity impact of this proposal on the neighbours. And as you heard quite clearly from the residents this evening, it certainly does. In particular, five Sparrow Hawkway is particularly adversely affected, as are the other residents. But it is set lower than the applicant's site, and the nature of this three-storey dwelling, and the fact that it will tower over that garden will be a dramatic loss of light, irrespective of what the report has said this evening. I believe that this proposal falls down clearly on the amenity argument. It is creating an overbearing pocket of high density. Yes, there are then high density developments in New York, but this creates such a, a clog jam in development that I feel it will adversely affect the neighbours, and will not be in keeping with the design principles that New Hall set out originally. So members, I urge you to oppose this application. I think there are clear grounds in our existing local plan and the emerging local plan to turn this application down. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Charles. Could I ask um, Jonathan Oswald and Sharon Gardner to both come forward and understand you're going to share the three minutes. Turn the mic on again for me, that'd be great. But, <coughs> right, sorry. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is John 
Cosmos Ward, I work on behalf of the agent for this application and our design studio. Um, the design for this talk has been set out within a series of parameters. So the, these parameters are set out by newer projects and the newer master plan, pilot district councils, uh, planning authority and development plan, the Essex design guide, county council parking standards and specifically um, the Urban Research Institute's site layout planning for daylight and sunlight that go to good practice. Uh, the building has been positioned in such a way to ensure adequate site-to-site -site separation between the properties on Meadow Lane as demonstrated by the street scene, uh, ensuring that there is a visual separation between the existing properties and the property that is under construction next door. It has also been positioned to retain the view through the front of the block as required by the new Hall master plan onto uh, Meadow Farm Hall. This restricted the development as per the new master plan further back uh, into the plot. The front of the area of this plot is also required to meet the required parking standards set out in the Essex Design Guide and the County Council Parking Standards. The shape of the roof um, has been determined uh, to maintain a similar height to the neighbouring properties on their way and to be in line with the ridge height of the properties um, on Sparrow Walkway. This is uh, despite the natural slope of the hill as has been mentioned previously. Uh, the backside separation clause number five is, um, as has been pointed out, approximately 60 metres. I believe it might be um, slightly more than that there. There is a separation between the plots for what is a um, wildlife corridor as part of the ecological mitigation plan. Um, for which the details um, I'm not privy to and are outside the boundary of our plot. Um, all of these items have been considered by the case officer for the application and have, uh, who has determined there be no technical or planning reasons for its refusal. Um, as a further point, I have we have documents from 2011 for, from the Normal Master Plan that do designate these two plots as self built plots at that time. The land was then transferred to Linden Homes in 2013. Um, as has been mentioned as well, a right to view is not, is not a material planning consideration. And the boundary to our plot is also proposed to be soft landscape rather than sort of a hard fencing currently proposed, making a point of that uh, low in the boundary. Thank you, students. Have you taken all three minutes? I only wanted to say that I'm Sharon Gardner and Stuart, and we've been living in that house ourselves, so we self build it. And in regards to the construction, my husband is a builder. We spoke to the people who already started building next door. We would be, we would be living there, we'd be really sympathetic to, to neighbours. We live really locally, we understand the buildings are going on, we live near Gildan Way. We want to be part of that community. Our daughters went to primary school there and go locally to school. And it would be great if we could start building that same time as a name to lessen the construction impact and surrounding and when the barn. And also the other point I wanted to make was this is the second time we've been to an architect. The first one wasn't considered modern enough, so this is the second time that we've had plans made up. So we've spent a considerable amount of money and time invested in this. So we want to live in that area. And we've gone more modern now, whereas we were more traditional before. So we've gone to an architect and we've taken care of that. We've been approved by New Hall Development and the designs. Okay, thank you. If you could take your seats. Members, questions? Yeah. Dear Officer, uh, I'd like to comment on Councillor Bill Charles's uh, loss of immunity argument, please. Uh, so, the. So, I'm just getting to the right side. So, in the main uh, point that's been raised has been specifically to do with number five, although three and seven also do obviously identify as having issues on nine. Um, in terms of uh, direct sunlight, obviously the sun travels from east to west, so for the majority of the day, uh, those properties are still going to get sunlight from the south. Um, loss of view isn't a planning consideration that can be taken into account. Overbearing can be taken into account, but uh, it's our judgment that the 16 metre separation distance would be sufficient in the context of um, 
new hall so as to be uh, acceptable. Um, is it your judgment that 16 metres is acceptable or is there a policy on that? Uh, we don't have prescribed policies ourselves. We obviously have page 10 and the emergency policy PL2 has been referred to. Uh, we have the Essex, we have, sorry, we have the Harlow Design Guide, which is our adopted design guidance. We also have um, adopted certain bits of the Essex Design Guide. We haven't adopted the um, specific bits to do with distances between dwellings. Um, the reason why I mention that in my speech that uh, 15 metres is stated in the Essex Design Guide is it gives you a flavour of what an acceptable distance would be in normal circumstances. Um, but ultimately, it is a matter of judgment and when you apply those policies, yes. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what the height is of the building? I can't, can't see it here. It's somewhere in the report. It might not be in the report, but I can, I've got a plant here so I can measure it from you if you give me a minute. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the blank wall that's nearest yeah. to the property is one really big one. That's a bit around six metres. Blank brick wall um, 
overbearing their governments. And I'm minded on that basis that uh, uh, to object to this. Yes, I, I do agree with that actually. Um, I think that's the main the main reason is in um, the overbearing nature anyway of the the whole development. I sympathise with the idea of self building, which is an interesting idea and so on. But nevertheless the impact on neighbours is agreed generally across the board. And um, it, it really is going to make a difference. First of all, there is the, the looking at the black wall, which <coughs> I know you can't consider a loss of view as a planning issue, but nevertheless, uh, the, the vision of a black wall is, is, is something different. It is overbearing. There is an impact on amenity, and generally, there does seem to be an agreement that. Um, there's a, a loss of light because the officer's report concedes that there's a, uh, a limited loss of light, which is depends how you look at it. Um, there's also the question of overlooking um, actually being able to see into somebody's bedroom, which is you no know, amount of masking can do away with that. So I, I know. You can argue it's separated by some 16 meters. That is, it, it still can be overbearing at the distance of 16 meters. So there is a serious visual impact generally. Um, I think, I think those are the, the main, main reasons. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Thank you, yeah, I have to agree with everything that's been said, very eloquently said. It's, um, I'd also add, you know, we talk about question of light, but the way it's, it's, it's built, you know, there'll only be a, a small shaft of sunlight at some stage, probably about midday, because the sun rises in east and west. So it's going to be sheltered. For most of the morning, and as it comes around the building, you might get a bit in the afternoon. So that means, but yeah, who wants to wake up in the morning to look at a brick wall that's 11 metres high? Yeah, and that's that's totally unacceptable. You know, it's, it ruins, it can ruin people's lives. I know it's difficult, but we need to talk about planning issues. And to me, H10, it's, it, it falls foul of that. The amenities, overbearing. It's it's. Uh, Overdevelopment of the site, probably. The one next door that's already got permission, looking at what's up there, is, doesn't look too bad. At least it gives a bit more, less height and you know, a bit more room. So, but this one, I wouldn't want to live there, so I wouldn't want to agree that anybody else needs to live there. So it breaches policy 10, page 10, and the emerging plan is it PL2. Council Livingston. Well, there's one, two, three councillors already spoken about this with, about this wall, and I think this is the um, main problem with the, with the build. And I, I, I couldn't agree more with these these other councillors, really. I mean, who wants to have a, a big brick wall looking out on every day? And I know it's it's not only about the residents, of course, the residents are very important. It's also about the planning application, but no, I, I don't feel happy about this, and I certainly wouldn't be uh, recommending this. Councillor Davis. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've looked at this. I feel sorry, first of all, for the people that are living there already, because they understood when they bought their homes, there'd just be a field there with the school, and obviously that's changed. Um, you said uh, planning, we can't take into account loss of view, but this obviously is a great big loss of view. We can take into account the overbearing uh, into these properties, particularly number five, although it does affect the other properties. Um, I understand it's not quite in keeping with the new hall design, 
Um, and there is going to be loss of light, and I think H10 covers that, and I will vote for it. Thank you. Did anybody want to comment on the overlooking? I think I just did. So oh, about I, I think you did. What you did say was that, yes, the, the balconies which are on the front, okay, and so theoretically you think that's fine, but they're directly into number three's garden rooms. So I think that's, that's uh, another issue. Right, if we want to move to the vote then, um, all those in favour of the recommendations which appear on the pages 24 and 26 of the oral debates? No? Okay, all those against? Okay. So to summarise, um, have we got the policies we need? They've all been quoted on. Uh, you've mentioned page 10 and PL2 so far. Um, I've got down loss of light, overshadowing, um, overbearing, and overlooking. And overlooking. Intrusive, intrusive, and no overbearing. Um, that means the, the distance is not far enough from the joint phone, is it? I'm sorry. Overbearing in terms of the, the scale of the building.